Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software, and on today's video, Getting to Know Eclipse Part 13, Working with Set Files, I'm going to show you how easy it is to work with portable settings files in Eclipse. In the last video, we went over how to create and manage your username.ini files within Eclipse. These username.ini files are the files that are actually used by Eclipse to load and manage your user settings while you're using Eclipse. These files can be backed up and shared with other users or moved to your other computers. However, this may not always be the best option depending on what you're trying to accomplish, especially when working with other Eclipse customers. Oftentimes, a portable set file is what you want to work with instead. When you share your username.ini file, that file will include file location pathing as well as dictionary assignments. And oftentimes, when you're sharing your settings with others, you simply want to share the settings for your documents instead. However, username.ini files are great when you're setting up a new computer. You can transfer your own username.ini files between computers to ensure that you have equivalent experiences on each machine. However, if you only want to share part of your settings, or if you want to share those settings with another Eclipse user, a set file will get you better results more efficiently. Set files are portable and easily shared between Eclipse users or between your own computers. These files make it simple and easy to share things like your document format with Scopus and proofreaders, or to ensure that all of your different username.ini files have the same settings like macros or keyboard assignments. With set files, you're allowed to choose which parts of your user settings you want to share, and you never have to worry about discrepancies with file pathing or dictionary assignments. When working with your user settings in Eclipse, it's important to remember that whenever you have Eclipse open and you're making changes to any of the options in your user settings, that these settings changes are being applied to your user file.ini, and that's going to be whatever is listed here. So when I make any changes to my user settings with this user open, I'm changing the ashley.ini file. And that file is what is in use when I'm working with documents, and it's the file that provides me all of my settings, including my macros, my display settings, my document format, and all of the other settings that encompass how I operate Eclipse while that user is open. Settings files allow you to transfer all or parts of your user settings, either between your own user.ini files or with other Eclipse customers. Right now, I have two users in Eclipse that I'm going to talk about. If I click Load Settings, I have Ashley and Example.ini. I'm going to stay in my Ashley INI right now, and I'm going to open up a sample file. In this file, you can see that my paragraph settings have a right margin of 52. My background is green, and if I go to my Edit tab and click on Macros, I have a complete list of macros, in addition to all of the other settings that make up this user. However, if I switch to a different user, my example.ini, and open the same file, you see that it looks drastically different. I don't have any toolbars at the top. My color changes are different. My display font is different. The info bar is missing along the left. However, my document format in this user is different. And if I go to my user settings to the paragraphs tab, you see that my right margin for this document in this user is 55. And this is the same for my master settings as well. And that's because this is what is required for this user settings. It does require the slightly larger right margin, and so I need to make sure that I don't change my document format in this user. I do, however, want all of my macros. If I go to my macro list in this user, you see that it's completely blank. And so what I want to do is take the display settings that I like and the macro settings that I like from my ashley.ini file and move them into this example.ini file. So what I'm going to do is load my good user, my ashley.ini. I'm going to go to my user settings and click export settings. In this window, you can choose which elements of your user settings you want to share. If you're making a backup of your user settings for yourself, you'd probably want to leave everything checked. But if you're sharing your settings with another user, 
They may not need all of your settings. For instance, a scopist or proofreader may not want your display settings, editing options, or keyboard setup, as they may have their own customized settings for these options, and these options won't ultimately affect the transcript that you get from them. However, for a scopist and proofreader, you would probably want to share your document format with them so that they do have your master document settings, and they can create a user to house those document settings within their own Eclipse. You also have the option of sharing all of the background settings in Eclipse, like number options, prefixes and suffixes, phonetics, auto replacements, and the meta dictionary. You can choose whichever elements of your user settings you'd like to transfer. In this instance, all I want to transfer are my display settings and my macro and keyboard options, so I'm going to choose none and check just display and keyboard setup. Keyboard contains the macro options, and so this will create a file that will contain the settings that control the display settings, as well as the keyboard and macro settings from my ashley.ini user, and I'll be able to create a portable settings file and import those settings into my example.ini user. So I'm going to press OK to create the file, and you see that at the top it says Files in Eclipse. By default, Eclipse will attempt to store settings files in the Eclipse folder, which is located in your Documents folder. You see that this is where all of the default Eclipse settings files reside. You can call your settings files whatever you'd like, as long as there's no invalid characters like slashes or periods in the name. I'm going to call this file display kb, since it contains my display settings and my keyboard settings. I'm going to go ahead and leave it saved in the Eclipse folder, since that's also where Eclipse will attempt to find files by default. However, if you wish to, you can choose any of the other locations that you have saved in Eclipse, or you can choose Browse, and select a location like a USB drive. Now that I've put in my name and I've decided that I do want to just save it in the Eclipse folder, I can choose OK, and Eclipse will confirm that I wish to create this file. I'll hit Yes, and now that file has been created. If I open my Windows File Explorer, go to Documents and Eclipse, you see that in this window, the display kb.set file is the most recent file. And that file is going to be available to me to use in my other user.ini files, or I can email it or save it to a disk to share with another colleague. In order to load these settings into my example.ini file, I'm going to press Load Settings, and I'm going to choose example.ini and press OK. Now I'm in this other user, example.ini, and you see that listed here when I go to my user settings. And again, you see that I don't have the info bar, I have no toolbars displayed, and if I open a document, my background color is just white, and my display font is not the bolded font that I prefer from my other user. So what I'm going to do is go to my user settings and click import settings. Here I see my display kb.set file, and I can either double click on it or click on it and press OK. And again, I'm given the option to select which elements of the user settings I'd like to take this time. Since in the export step, I only chose keyboard and display. These are the only two options I have to choose from. In this case, I want to go ahead and import both, but if I didn't want either of these, I could simply uncheck it. I'm going to press OK to import these settings. And you see that now, although I'm still in my example user, I now have the info bar on the left, I have the toolbars at the top, and if I reopen sample file, I have the bolded text that I prefer as well as the green background. And since I also imported my keyboard settings, if I go to Settings, Edit, Macros, I now have a complete list of macros, as well as having the same keyboard assignments that I did in the other user, ashley.ini, that I took these settings from. However, if I go to the Paragraphs tab, you see that in this user, the document still has 55 characters per line, and my master format still has 55 characters per line. Since I didn't share the document format from the ashley.ini user to the example.ini user, my document format has not been modified at all. So I can still produce work for both agencies with the correct margins. However, all of the settings around my document, as far as the way that it looks, my controls in the info bar, and the toolbars, as well as my macros, now all match my ashley.ini user.
and I can ensure that my workflow is exactly the same even though the document formats differ. If you want to share your user settings with a scopist or a proofreader, it is very simple. You can go to User Settings, Export Settings, and select which options you'd like to share with them. Typically, only document format is necessary. However, depending on who you're working with or sharing your settings with, they may request other settings, or you can even choose to send all of your settings by default if that's what you'd like to do. There's certainly no harm in that. Once you've decided which elements of your settings you'd like to share, you can simply press OK, and next, choose a location for these settings to be saved. If, for example, in this instance, we want to share these settings with a scopist or proofreader instead of applying them to another one of our own users, I can save this to my desktop and I can call this Ashley Settings to indicate to the scopist or proofreader what this file contains. It contains my settings and since my name is Ashley, I've just named it Ashley Settings. I've, I've elected to save it on the desktop so that it'll be easy to email and as soon as I press OK, Eclipse will confirm that I wish to create this file. As soon as I click yes, that file is created on my desktop. I can go to Windows File Explorer, Desktop, and you see that the Ashley settings.set file is there. If you don't see the .set at the end of your file name and you are looking for it, you can always go to the View tab at the top and ensure that File Name Extensions is checked. As long as that's checked, you'll always see extensions at the end of your file names and this can sometimes help avoid confusion. Now that I've confirmed that this file is here, I can do anything that I'd like with it. I can email it to a colleague or a scopist or proofreader, or I can simply maintain it as an on-device backup of my good settings should I ever need them. Remember that if you do this, you should also have an off-device backup of your user settings as well, such as on an external hard drive, thumb drive, within cloud storage, or even if you just email it to yourself. Once I've created the set file for my scopist or proofreader and I've emailed it off to them, my scopist or proofreader can save that set file to their desktop or wherever on their computer is easy for them to find it. And in order to use the file, they would simply go to import settings, choose desktop or whatever location they saved the file. They would choose the file name and hit OK or open. Or again, you can also double click. And at this point in the import process, Whoever is importing the file will be able to choose which elements they'd like. If I'm a scopist or proofreader, I may not want to import the reporter's display, editing, or keyboard options, as I've set these up for my own workflow myself. However, everything else is fine. However, if I am a new reporter coming on to a new job at a new firm for the first time, and I've been shadowing a reporter at that firm, I may want to simply take all of their settings so that they can help me get acclimated to the job. Which settings you import are totally up to you, and as I said, any that you don't want, you can simply uncheck. Once you've selected the options that you do wish to import, just press OK, and any of the options that you checked will now be incorporated into the user settings that you had open at the time. Settings files make quick and easy work of sharing your settings with other Eclipse users, or even just making sure that your settings are consistent among your own computers or your Eclipse user.ini files. If one of your users looks a little bit different than the other, you can always just share the display settings that you like better and get that problem solved in just a few moments. Settings files are easy to use and can be backed up and stored to ensure that you always have access to your settings. If you're going to make major changes to your user settings, it's always a good idea to come to your user settings and hit export settings and ensure that everything is checked to make a backup of your current settings before you make any major changes. That way, if you need to revert any of those settings, you'll be able to go right back to where you were before. If you're going to take any training, do any seminars, or attend any webinars, it's also a good idea to make a backup of your user settings this way before those seminars, webinars, or trainings, just in case any of your settings are changed and you need to change them back. Settings files have a wide variety of uses, and they can be shared amongst users of any modern version of Eclipse. Settings files may be preferable to INI files when sharing settings for a variety of reasons. And both exporting and importing settings using this method 
should be a tool in your toolbox. Thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget that Advantage Software offers anytime support 24 7. Tech support can be reached anytime, including weekends and holidays, at 772 288 3266. Email support is also available at support at eclipsecat.com. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you'll be notified when we publish new content in the future. Thanks so much and have a great day.